live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello and welcome back to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. We're live streaming here from the Fox 12 Oregon Newsroom. Thanks for joining us. We cover a wide range of topics here on this show, but one that we do frequently talk about are things that are going on in space, things that you can see from here, and that includes the moon. And there is a very special moon that's going to be happening here uh, today, really, and that is the, I want to make sure I get it right, super solstice full cold moon. That is a mouthful right there. We're going to talk about what that means and really how that's uh, affecting not only what you can see in the sky, but also in the ocean when it comes to the king tides that are happening over on the Oregon coast. So there's a whole lot of things I just threw at you. To make sense of all of this, we have Jim Todd from OMSI joining us. Jim, always great to have you here on the show as a part of this to explain what it is that's going on. And I think, you know, to start off, can you tell me what a super solstice full cold moon is? <laughs> Well, first of all, it's a lot happening with this uh, full moon that we have today. Uh, obviously, it is a full moon, and okay? so that's when uh, the moon is in between. The Earth is in between the, the moon and the sun, so that's a full phase moon, and so that's happening. And about uh, roughly 3:45 p.m., we'll have that beautiful moonrise from the, the northeast. And so we have what's also called the cold moon. It's a cold moon because it's, it's in, obviously in December. And it's also going to be at its highest for the year, which is the solstice moon. The winter solstice coming up on December 21st. This is the full moon closer to the winter solstice. So this is going to be the highest full moon for the year, 72 degrees above the southern horizon for our latitude. So that's why it appears to be so white. And it's right from the northeast, and that, that, that's the combination that we have a beautiful solstice moon. It was quite noticeable last night with the Washington Gibbons moon. It was a spectacular moon. So tonight at 345, keep an eye on the northeast. We'll see it, and at about 1233, it'll be at 72 degrees above the southern horizon. So we have those, and we also have what's called the supermoon. The supermoon is a, it's a phrase that is used mainly in the media. As to kind of describe, oh, the moon is at its closest distance to the Earth. It's actually a perigee because the moon's orbit around the Earth in a kind of an egg-like, an elliptical orbit. And that some, at one point, it's at its closest. So we have the full moon perigee on the same day. So that's technically called the supermoon. And with the supermoon, the moon will roughly be about 8% larger 16% brighter. And so to a layman, this just looked like another full moon. But with the perigee or supermoon, it has the effect on the Keen's tide. Keen tides is a phrase that is used that because the moon, the full moon, and the sun, with that combination, increase the high tide to be higher as much as eight feet to 10 feet higher. And then we have uh, the, that low. Uh, Ties, they're going to be somewhat lower. That is always associated with the full moon and new moon. But with the full moon, we have the king tide. And what happened there is that we have the spectacular display of the tides crashing onto the shoreline at the Oregon coast. So it might not want to be too close to the coast coastline, but uh, that, it does create that kind of a flooding and a spectacular show. And if we have a combination of really bad storm, it can add, the high pressure, low pressure system can actually add to it, add the tide a little bit, create the, the flooding. So a lot to talk about with the association with the, the moon. Yeah, there is so many, so many things going on there. So the super means that it's at the, is, I'm sorry, what was the term that you had? A perigee. Perigee. Yeah, perigee, and there's apog apogee means far. Perigee means close. It's about a 31,000 mile difference between the two. Wow, okay, so it's, it's at its closest. And let's talk about the, the king tide aspect. So when a moon is, you know, this close, and this is something that obviously we can predict, but that is during, it is it during these circumstances that we end up with the king tides. 
It does. And when the moon is closed, it has an extra gravitational influence on the ocean tide. Now, actually, it's not today that's at its highest. It's kind of like the after effect. So after today, for the next three days, we'll have them the highest tide. So it's kind of like a delay effect a little bit that we will uh, see the, t the uh, king tide. So actually tomorrow will be your best bet to get you the best show. So you want to check the tide tables and check out when it's going to be at its highest. But it will definitely be higher, like eight to ten feet higher than normal. That's interesting. So it's it takes it about a day for that effect to go in. You know, when we talk about that, would you mind just explaining a little bit of it, you know, about what is happening there, you know, with the moon coming that that close, obviously because of the king tides and there's a gravitational pull. But I mean, could you give us just a basic explanation of what's exactly is happening to to get a, an yeah. image of that? Mm -hmm. Well, what we have is what's called a lunar cycle of the Earth. And we all know that the moon goes around the Earth uh, for, you know, 29 and a half days. That is one lunar cycle. So that uh, we have uh, 13 uh, orbits around the Earth in, in one year. So it's, the orbit in itself is kind of an egg-like uh, shape. So that there's one point that's called perigee, which is at its, at its closest. The opposite end is apogee. Apogee means far. And so when the nose line up, and then we have, of course, the moon has always had a tidal influence. Okay? And then we have the sun. The sun has also been, of course, providing this wonderful gravity that keeps us here uh, alive here on Earth. But um, when we have the combination of the full moon and sun, that creates an even greater effect on the tides. That's why it's called Keen's Tide. Keen means above all. Okay? And so this is the one of the four of the supermoon that we've had in 2025, 20, 26. We had it in October, November, now December, and then January will be our last of this group. The reason for that is the perigee node, it's called, and the full moon uh, effect have to be lined up nearly on the same day. Of course, it doesn't happen every month because that node where the perigee and apogee shifts uh, the moon goes around the Earth, and the Earth is also going around the sun. So it's a very complex uh, geometry that's all happening uh, all at once. But that's what the effect of the keen tide, what's what by definition. It, really interesting. Yeah, to know that that's, you know, all of these different things taking place at the same time and have, how that's happening. So you said January's the next one, and then after that, are there any more? Um, uh, and that I, I have... So I have to check on the on the uh, calendar for 2026, but after that in January, we won't see another king or super moon. But I'm sure there are going to be a few more later in 2026. But uh, you could see it generally last for about four months when we have this super moon. Uh, interesting enough, just uh, about a month ago, literally, the new moon was a micro moon. A micro moon it was at its close, uh, furthest distance uh, away from the Earth. It's the opposite. And so uh, that was what one of the largest, uh, 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 what we call micro moons, that we've had for some time. And we won't see that micro moon, apogee, until at least 2044. 20, so it's a lot of good information. It is. It's really you have to you have to think three dimensionally. You have to have to kind of understand visually what's happening. But it's it's fun to talk about. Yeah, it is. And um, you know, for people who want to see this moon tonight, I'm going to guess the weather may not necessarily cooperate. Yeah, the moon is well. You know, it, it it is a full moon, so you'd be surprised sometimes, even if there's heavy clouds. You might be able to get a few sucker holes here and there to be able to see the moon start to appear. For example, last night, the fog started moving in, but the moon was putting on a really good show. And it, it has an effect with the clouds. It makes it really spectacular views when you have the clouds moving in and out around the moon. And um, the other thing, too, is that uh, compared to the summer, the summer moon, full moons, are low. 
that we have to lot of contend with when we have the moon at that very low angle. When it's high, it's going to be nearly straight up overhead, especially around midnight. Uh, you might get a good chance to even see a, a, a glimpse of the moon here and there. You never know what the weather sometimes. We might get some lucky breaks or thinning of the clouds and what have you. But it adds to the drama, and it, we, uh, we're in the month of December. It's, that's why it's called the cold moon, the winter moon, or the, uh, what have you, the solstice moon. That's what adds to the scene when you take a look at it. I mean, it sounds amazing. And, you know, anything else that you think is important for people to know? Uh, well, one well, kind of a bonus, uh, if you want to look at this, if you get clear skies tonight, uh, the bonus is that uh, Jupiter uh, is going to be to the left of the full moon. Do you see that really bright object? That planet Jupiter is over there. And then to the right, we have the Pleiades to the right of the moon. So you take your binoculars, why are you enjoying the, the moon uh, tonight? Take a look at Jupiter to the left, take this to the right, take a look at Pleiades, and then uh, you can really just really uh, get a wonderful view uh, of our night sky. Well, so a lot of great options here. If we can just get a couple of cloud breaks through there and see that moon. Well, Todd, uh, Jim, <laughs> Jim, thank you very much uh, for joining us. I really, really appreciate it, as always, to have you on here and to walk us through all of that. and. And to talk about uh, these, you know, it's just fun to learn about. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Greg. All right. And for everybody watching, too, this is Fox 12 Now. And really appreciate uh, all of you watching us, too. So uh, uh, it's great to have, you know, people like Jim Todd on to talk about this and walk through these things and get a little bit longer interview to really understand what's going on there with our world and uh, what's happening all around us. And we're going to be... Uh, Taking a break for now, so those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll see this video end. If you're watching on our apps or website, you'll probably see Investigate TV Plus. We'll be back here throughout the afternoon. If there's any breaking news, we'll have that as well. And we do have plenty more things that we're going to be covering here today. So thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.